Welcome to the Fight Night Daily podcast. Myself and Spencer Oliver here at the climax, the denouement of the weigh-in show here at uh, the auditorium in Manchester. Logan Paul, they are waiting to attend on stage. He's kept Dylan Dennis waiting. We know what's happened this week. No drama yet today at the weigh-in. We've just got those and Tommy Fury and KSI and Big John on stage as well. I'm here with Spencer Oliver. Michael Buffer, that great voice, is in the background. No drama so far, but we are expecting there to be some. Gareth, we saw what drama there was yesterday at the press conference. You know tensions will be risen even higher today. I'm expecting something to happen. There'll be drama on stage, that, that's for sure. But what I must say is, we're here at this weigh-in, and there is a real big fight feel about this. Big event big, feel. Big, big event yeah. feel about this. Like When you look around, there, there is thousands of people that have attended here. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Absolutely. It's got the feel of a weigh-in for an Anthony Joshua fight or a Tyson Fury fight. There's something big. It's a big yeah. event. You don't get big events without Michael Buffer here for a start. And you can hear that voice in the background. The key is, is there going to be more kickoff? It's trending towards over a million pay-per-view buys. Yeah, absolutely. And you can understand why. I mean, you've seen the build-up to this all week. There's a lot of big big names in their own world, the YouTube world, that are on this build. I mean, there is hundreds of millions of people that follow these people. Dylan Dennis has just weighed in at 195 pounds. He's been on stage waiting for Logan Paul. He's keeping, we saw him earlier, I'll tell you what happened. We went out for a little talk sport break before this happened today. We had a little cappuccino, cappuccino. <laughs> All four of the team, you can't see two of them, two of us here. We saw Logan Paul arrive in a balaclava. Yep. And I suspect he's going to wear the balaclava, because remember what happened yesterday? He got hit by a microphone from Dylan Dennis. He will be on stage, but he'll play mind games with Dylan Dennis for Absolutely. Now. He wore the balaclava because he picked up a nick over his eye. We don't know how bad that nick was. We heard that it may be have been glued, but it would be interesting to see how he comes in here because Gareth's right in what he said. He come in with a balaclava. Is he playing mind games? We didn't know the fight was even going to go ahead. It is going ahead, and here comes Logan Paul. We're going to part the seas for a minute and let us go in and just see Logan Paul's entrance on stage. Real drama, real drama here, because we know what happened yesterday. We could get some real trouble here, Spencer Oliver. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, we know that there is real hatred between these two. Now, that's a strong word to use, but we know these guys dislike each other. Dylan Dallas has been doing a lot of online trolling about Logan's vicious fiance, campaign. vicious, and it was, that's why it turned out the way it did yesterday, and I'm expecting something to happen here now. I do think that, that Dylan Dallas has put fire in Logan Paul's belly for this contest. Let's remind ourselves, this is very WWE. He's in the WWE, of course, is Logan Paul. This is influencer boxing at the end of the day. This isn't real boxing, but there is a crowd, there's an audience for this kind of entertainment. Gary, if you're right in what you say, it is WWE, but this fight is the, it's got the WWE, but where that is play acting, this fight is not play acting. No, they're in the cage together now, as you can see. This is the cage, of course, with the Perspex glass that John Fury punched, headbutted, kicked, elbowed to try and get to KSI yesterday. Will he try it again today? What will happen in this cage now? In fact, when they went into the cage yesterday, I didn't know there was Perspex in there in the middle. You and I thought, it. oh my God, you this is going to be very ugly. And listen, I didn't know how strong that Perspex was either because when John Fury went in there, he was punching it, he was kicking it, he was headbutting it. And you know that it had to be strong in there to, I was to survive to the, that. I was talking to the makers of the cage today, the DAZN executives, who were saying they have created this Perspex. Apparently a car could not drive through it at 20 miles an hour. That's how strong the Perspex is. Dylan Dennis revving up the crowd here now. Um, this is an unusual fight night podcast because we're taking some of the action. Here goes Logan Paul into the cage. There's nothing they can do to get to each other for about another 30 hours. 
but my word, it's going to be some fight. We don't even know if Dylan Dennis can box. Listen, I've got to tell you, yeah, Dylan Dennis at the open workout, he was doing his jiu-jitsu. We know he's, he's, he's superb in jiu-jitsu, but we don't even know if he can throw hands. One thing we do know is Logan Paul can throw hands, but this, is, this fight could steal the show because of the build-up that has been and because of what happened yesterday. I think there's a real intrigue in what happens in this fight. If Dylan Dennis can box, yes, but if he can't, I think he'll get owned by Logan Paul, who's got a bit of experience. He's done eight rounds with Floyd Mayweather. That was an exhibition, of course. Well, he, I, I, what I'd like to say there, if we could just come back into view now, is that um, Dylan Dennis has just tested the perspects for John Fury's arrival, in my view. Listen, if John Fury couldn't pull it through, Dylan Dennis wouldn't pull it through either. John Fury lost his head yesterday, let me tell you. He went absolutely mad. He had to be pulled out of this venue. He's a real like a man. He's a fucking pussy. Well, Dylan Dennis probably wrong here, because yesterday, Logan Paul got hit by a microphone when he was standing next to him. So, well, Logan Paul not sure that he does want to do the face-off and get that close did you know to what? Dylan that, Dennis That's today. interesting because has he got inside Logan Paul's head? Logan Paul was completely overconfident, if anything, yesterday. He was talking to him. He got inside Dylan's head. He was angry. Dylan, yeah, he was angry. Yeah. But after the events of yesterday, getting hit with that microphone, he didn't want to get involved there. No. Is that round one to Dylan Dallas? Well, at the end of the day, he got hit by a microphone. He's had to go and get checked out at hospital. It's taken time out of him. Gordon Ryan is one of the greatest grapplers the world has ever seen. Gordon Ryan is the world's greatest grappler, by the way. Really, I'm here just to uh, retrieve Dylan because I need someone to clean my cars, and he's the one who usually does it. And so I came all the way here just to retrieve him to bring him back home to Texas. Long-standing feud between these two that dates back many, many years. Gordon Ryan and Dylan Dennis. I would love to get Dylan's thoughts on this, but I don't know if I could do that. Let me just ask. You. Dylan ain't got no thoughts. He's fucking brain dead. Finally, what happened this morning with the win? He says that the. Uh, he says a lot of shit. It's all bullshit. He's looking for any reason he can to pull out of this fight, but it's coming, Dylan. 24 hours, I'm gonna decapitate your fucking ass. Thank you very much, Logan. Good luck to you. Appreciate well, it. Okay, as we come back into focus here, I'm going to decapitate your bleeping ass. Do you think he will? He's, given, he's got this a reason, is, isn't he? Absolutely. Like I said to you, this has become personal. I mean, you can hear him going off up there. Like I say, you're a fucking dead man when you get back to Jersey, you pussy-ass bitch. Yep. Well, Fair so to say, he's in Logan's head. Or Logan's in his head. It's, look, it's part of the drama. It's playground talk, frankly, because when the bell rings tomorrow, it's the pair of them in the ring. And you know you've been there. You have been there. Do you know there. what? It's all so about who can keep their head in this fight. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Like I say, Dylan Nallis, we don't know what he's like in the boxing ring. We know that Logan Paul is probably the most talented boxer on this card, actually. He's the most, uh, most I think athletic. Tommy Fury is. Well, yeah, Tommy Fury, but I mean, like, non boxer. Non boxer. Yeah. No, I meant non boxer. Sorry, I, I, I take that back. I meant non boxer. He's probably the most talented YouTube boxer. You may be right, on this but card. I don't agree. But, but. It's going to be interesting to see if he can keep his head because it has become very personal. Well, if you thought that was dramatic, now we have KSI and Tommy Fury. There's been a lot of talk. John Fury's part of the protagonism as well. We've got them about to come on stage. Very, very packed gallery here. We've seen upstairs just above us, Derek Chisora in KSI's room. They're, they're in change rooms above us here. They're about to come down six three minute rounds in the cruiserweight division as you can hear michael buffer saying behind me this is a moment that tommy fury needs to get in the head of ksi he, he's a real boxer he can't lose this fight in many ways he's critiqued by the boxing community he's resented by some people he's got massive paydays 
He's yeah. the right guy in the right place at the right time. And why should he say no to it as a young father? It's a, it's a difficult but maybe good predicament to be in. Absolutely. Listen, he, he knows exactly what he's doing. He said that, you know, his ultimate goal, his long-term goal is to become a boxer. He wants to become world champion. He wants to become British champion. But why would you do this from a business point of view? He's been getting paid huge money for what he says is going to be easy fight. It's going to be... But he's putting a lot on his line. He's in his hometown of Manchester. Could you imagine if he lost this fight? Would he ever be able to walk down the street again? I'm not sure he would. Yeah, it's a very difficult double-edged sword for him. He's, in many ways, what the experience he's got as 9-0 as a boxer, yes, the one fight with Jake Paul earlier in the year, the big, very big pay-per-view view buys in, in the Middle East. Almost. He's under as much pressure, if not more, when he, than when he fought Jake Paul, because uh, people are expecting him to win. Absolutely, it's a must-win fight for him. Well, we will get the arrival in a moment of KSI, who's always got something dramatic to say. He's been very WWE in the build-up. Britain's biggest influencer, 45 million subscribers online. Everything he touches seems to turn to gold. He's got his prime drink, he's got his boxing career, he's got his music career. KSI is about to make his entrance onto the stage. I haven't heard John Fury yet. Tommy Fury, TNT Fury, looked in great shape. They're weighing in, I think they're 183 pounds, yeah, a pair of them. I believe so. We know they've weighed in on weight at the official weigh-in this morning. Yeah. That means a lot, a big weight cut for Tommy Fury as well, by the way. It is, but if you look at the pair of them, when they come head-to-head -head yesterday, you can see that Tommy Fury is much bigger than KSI, who's just making his entrance right now. Let's take a look at exactly how he's looking. The great thing about KSI, the great thing about KSI is the utter confidence that he exudes. He's so confident. He exudes such confidence. Yep, I've done the interview with KSI that you can get on TalkSport YouTube channel. And I've got to say, you know, when you speak to someone and reality's kicked in and you look into their eyes and you ask them, you look into their eyes and you see whether they really fancy it. I've got to tell you, the belief that he's got, he truly believes he's going to win this fight which makes him a dangerous, dangerous opponent to box because well, he's dangerous until he gets docks. punched in the face. Well, absolutely. Let's see By what happens then. a big, heavy, then. strong jab from a Fury. So they're in the cage. There's no John Fury today yet. Yeah. He looks so much bigger than KSI, doesn't he, Spencer? Yeah, he does. There's a considerable size difference there with Tommy Fury. But KSI is full of confidence. Let's just hope they don't get injured uh, pushing that perspex cage. Um, they certainly don't hit it as hard as John Fury hit Absolutely. it yesterday. This is very, very WWE Listen, in we style. said it was very we WWE. We couldn't see this in pro but, boxing. No, but that's, that's their world. They that's where they come from. It. This is all about numbers, all about sales, and that's exactly what they're doing. It's over, they keep saying to each other. It's over, says KSI. I'm going to put you out. KSI told you yesterday, see the interview on the boxing YouTube channel on TalkSport. He's utterly convinced he'll knock Tommy out. He Let's is. do a prediction. I'm going Tommy Fury fourth round knockout. I'm going Tommy Fury points. I think and that, that doesn't surprise me yeah, either. I think that he stays out of trouble. KSI yeah. is going to go looking for it. He's going to be on the hunt. He's going to be looking yeah. for that right hand over the top. Yeah. Tommy and Fury will go into his shell eventually. Absolutely. I think that Tommy will go out there. He'll wait for his opportunity. If he doesn't get that opportunity, he'll nick it on points. And then I think we'll see Tommy Fury fight Logan Paul if he beats Dylan Dennis. Why not? Listen, it's yeah. all about the money, and I think that that's a huge fight. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's in their world, by it's the way. Fascinating, yeah, it's fascinating to be here and watch the way they are evolving the promotion of this. It's not what we normally do. The week after, of course, we're going to be live at the O2 Arena for Dan Aziz uh, against Joshua Boatsy in a really brilliant all That's a great British trade fight. Right heavyweight title fight. Absolutely. You know, they are two friends that have become rivals. South London, all, all South London derby. That is a great fight. You can hear that live and exclusive on TalkSport next Saturday. Um, that a is a real Saturday, fight. Yeah, a week on a Saturday. A week on Saturday. Yeah. On the 21st of October. We're going to bring in Johnny Fisher now, who's joining us. Johnny, come on in. Johnny, 
Yeah, yeah we're, we're kind of... How are you, mate? We're stunned, astounded and... Um, anyway, first, how are you, first of all, very quickly? I'm very good, mate. I'm, I'm very happy to be up in Manchester. I love it up here. It's great to be here. What an atmosphere. Uh, c congratulations on the Young Boxer of the Year Award at the Boxing Writers on Monday. I appreciate it. I saw you there. Great, great to be among their names and a personal honour to be rewarded it by uh, John Conti. What a fighter John Conti was. He what are was. you doing up here? Um, I was up here with BJ Flores. Um, he's doing a boxing seminar and then I realised that's in the KSI Tommy Fury fights on as well. So I, I talked to some people at the zone and they said... What's your okay. thoughts on this, John? Firstly, the turnout that they've got here at the weigh-in. And what's your thoughts on this sort of boxing? I mean, do you think it's good for the Can sport? pause you for a minute? Yeah, pause. Let's just listen to KSI for a minute. But soon tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, you will all understand and you will all know. Let's fucking go, baby. Right. Can you learn anything from that? Um, no, I can't. What I do know, though, what I can learn from this event is look at all the people here. This is more than some boxing shows get. And luckily for me, I've sent a lot of tickets. I've got a great fan base. But we can learn from this event and how they market it that they get people in. But you can't go away from being yourself. You've got to be what, yourself. You can't what is that? who you are. What is that, John? Is that about selling yourself, though? We live in a world where, you know, social media is such a big thing. These yeah. YouTube stars have, have recognised that boxing is a big outlet yeah. and that boxing's the umbrella for what they're doing. But they recognise that, you know, the numbers are huge. Yeah, well, it's attracting a huge crowd just for the weigh-in. So people must like this brash, this, this out there way. It's not my style, but it works for some boxers in the professional game. And this is taking it, this is it on steroids, basically. Listen, I think if you've got the boxing skills and you've got the personality, yeah. I think it's fine to do this. It is, but I don't, the one I have a problem with it is when you can't fight and you're talking like you're a superstar. Yeah. That's what annoys me a little bit. John, look, we've got tag team boxing that's even going on in there. Yeah. I'm going to ask you this question. I've got to ask you the question. You know what I'm going to say. <laughs> Johnny Fisher and Johnny Fisher Senior, who would you go in against if, he, if it was ever to happen? Uh, Eddie Hearn and Barry Hearn. Uh, Eddie Hearn and Barry up. Hearn, there you go. There's a I doubt one of those is retired from life. I yeah. mean, Barry Hearn's about 80, but I still reckon, 75. I still reckon he's fitter than Big John, so it's a fair matchup, to be fair. But no, listen. You wouldn't really do it, would you? No, my dad's been asked to do things like that. He would not. He's a, he's a purist. He wouldn't disrespect the sport like that. Yeah. To an extent, I am as well. I understand why people like this, but I separate professional boxing from this entertainment. Well, we, we, make this, we, we make this point the whole yeah. time. We're yeah. here, we're covering it for talk sport. There's a particular market for it. But we are drawing a line in the sand, overarchingly, that this isn't boxing. If you understand this, this is entertainment, John. This is entertainment, WWE style. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so and people still train in art, but they will never be professional boxers in it, my eyes. It, it's effectively white-collar boxing, it but is. it's entertainment. Um, boxing's the umbrella for it all, but it, as long as people recognise that there is a market for this, but it it's is different. not professional boxing. It's different, completely different. And, so I, um, suppose, I suppose the argument's going to be, well, Tommy Fury is yeah. a professional boxer. Well, he is a professional boxer, and they're all training like professional athletes, but I can't knock Tommy Fury for doing it. I think, I know, I'm a Tommy Fury fan, and I hope he uh, does a job on KSI. Yeah, well, final question, is there pressure on Tommy Fury? So there is pressure, because exactly what Spencer just said. He's expected to go in there and do demolition jobs. Did he do one on Jake Paul? Not really, no. I'm hoping that he will do it on KSI. Great to see you, Johnny, as always. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yep, well done, John. So it's kicking off uh, on stage behind us, on the DAZN stage, between Idris Virgo and Mike Perry, who look like they're going to have a fight. Do you know what? Well, I, I actually point. heard that, that there was going to be a fight on tomorrow, a surprise fight. Is that the one, Gareth? Could, could that be. be the one? You never know, it might be. Fascinating, though. There's a beef between those two. They're both proper fighters, of course. Mike Perry in boxing, MMA and bare knuckle fighting. Idris Virgo as a professional boxer. We're going to hit the streets shortly. You've been watching the Fight Night podcast here from the weigh-in at KSI versus Tommy Fury. We're live tomorrow night on Talk Sports from 8 p.m. Don't miss it myself. Spencer Oliver, Adam Catterall and Don McGuinness. Make sure you tune in tomorrow from 8pm TalkSport Live.